Okay. All right. So I'm going to break this demo down into two different sections. So one is going to be what the students are actually seeing, which is what we actually call the bench prep application. Um, so that's what the students, when they log in, that's what they're going to see is where all of the course content is, all of the ACT prep material is located on the student side. The second portion, I'll focus more on the teacher and admin tools that we provide you guys so you understand um, kind of the differences between the reporting that we give you and kind of where to go to find everything. So I'm going to get started right here. Hopefully everyone sees my screen. This is what we call our study plan screen. Um, so this is the area that we have designed specifically to help students stay organized as they're studying for the ACT. And what it does is it takes every piece of content in the course and gives it a structured format. And you can see these are what we call study tasks. Each study task is a combination. It could be lessons. Uh, it could be flashcards, it could be practice questions, or it could be an exam itself. And I'm just going to scroll down so you can see that there's varied tasks. Each task is a different number of knowledge points, and there's also a different length of time. And so the study plan section is where we typically push students um, to actually go when they're studying. If they complete the entire study plan, they will have completed all of the content in the course. And the study plan has been specifically designed by instructional designers to take them through the content in the way that makes the most sense. So for the ACT, you know, it's going to be starting with the most basic concepts and moving their way up. Right here on the screen, there's a couple things to note and for students and you as teachers to also kind of just be aware of as you are getting the students onboarded. So the study plan is designed to adapt to certain time frames um, or, you know, when they're planning on taking the exam. We typically recommend to set this date as a week or two prior to when students are planning to take, to take the actual ACT or when you as a class are planning to be done studying for the exam. Initially, when students log in, they will have a pop-up that's going to prompt them to pick the date. Um, you can also change this date at any time as you're studying. So if I wanted to push it back to January, I can easily update the deadline, and you can see that it's automatically going to update. A few other things to call out are this idea of knowledge goals. So this is where the, the study tasks come into play and what those different knowledge points underneath each task um, really means. And this was a tool we added to help students quantify how much they should be studying in any given day. So what we do is we take how many total knowledge points there are in the course. This one has over 7,000 divided by the number of days they have left to study, and that's how we actually help them gauge how many tasks they should be completing in a day in order to finish everything in their allotted time. This will update nightly, so if a student doesn't get into study one day, or they took a whole week off, this number is going to constantly update based on how many total knowledge points there are left and how many days there are left. So don't worry if you miss a day, this will automatically readjust um, for the students. Any questions so far? No. OK. Feel free if you do have a question, um, feel free to jump in. Um, I don't mind at all. I think it's easiest if we can be on the same page with the questions. Um, all right, so I'm going to click into one of the actual study tasks. This one is a lesson study task itself. When I click into this, I'm going to be given this one is actually an overview of the lesson itself. It's like just dimmed out for, you, for me. There we go. So this is um, an example of our lessons. <clears throat> Excuse me, our lesson section. So this one is a pretty basic. It's only study task of one lesson goes over the basic format of the ACT itself. Something to note over here is this idea of confidence levels. 
So we ask students as they're going through the course to mark their confidence on both lessons and flashcards pretty uh, religiously. Practice questions and exam questions um, have the option to mark confidence levels, but as they're going through the content that doesn't actually score them anything, we really ask them to rate how well they're doing. And this is both from an admin perspective to be able to see a breakdown, which I'll show you later, of students' confidence. And then also for the students to be able to easily go back and filter just their lowest confidence level lessons when they're ready to go back and start reviewing. I'm going to mark this one, hit finish task. I'm going to get a nice recap of the study task I just completed, and I will continue back to the study plan. I'm going to click into one that has a little bit more lessons so you can just see kind of what the flow looks like as students would go through the reading material. hit finish task. Again, I'm gonna get this recap. You'll see how many knowledge points I actually gained with that lesson. My confidence level breakdown, I can go back and review or continue to the study plan. And you'll see as I go along, these tasks as I was completing them are going to be shade out, shaded out a little bit differently than the tasks I have not completed yet. This automatically is updating up here as well as my progress. I am 1% in. Um, nice way to kind of encourage students to keep practicing and keep their progress up. I'm going to jump away from this section um, for a little bit so I can dive more into the actual content itself. So over here, this is the left navigation of the course. We break it up kind of into the top four sections, which are features that we've added on top of the main course material that make studying a little bit more interesting, additional tools um, that make things a little bit more exciting than just studying from a straight book. These Bottom four icons down here is where the bulk of the course content is actually going to live. Students can jump to these sections at any time, but again, as I said earlier, the study plan actually takes all the content in these four sections, gives it more of a structured order that the student um, should be following as they're going through the course. I'm going to click into the lessons right now. This is the table of contents view, so this is going to be everything that's covered in the course itself. It's searchable. If you ever, students ever want to learn um, just about specific concepts or terms, they can always refer back here and see what um, the course is actually going to be teaching them. You'll also see their confidence levels being marked right next to them. And up along the top here, this is where you're going to be able to sort those confidence levels by just the low, medium, or high. And if I click into these, then I would only be reviewing the high confidence in this case. I clicked low, I could click through and just view my low confidence lessons. We also do have note and bookmark features students can use if they'd like. Leave themselves a note. And when they do that, they can come back here as well to review any of the notes that they left or the bookmarks that they wanted to refer back to at any point. And you can see those also show up over here. Emily, can I ask a question? Yes. So all of the students are given the same um, sequence of lesson study? Yes. And then you recommend that all of the students uh, taking part of the program follow the as it's outlined, but they so, can jump around and search if the student chooses to or if the instructor chooses to. Yep, that's correct. So okay. our, yep, our program is designed for self-study, um, and we do recognize that, you know, some students might want to, might not want to go sit through all of the, you know, easier concepts that they might already be familiar with and would rather just jump into some of those more challenging sections, which is why they are free to roam the content as they please. Um, the study plan section is really just a way to help help us help them stay more organized so that as they're going through, you know, they don't remember what they did or, you know, what they've studied, what they haven't studied. The study plan is a nice place to follow, especially if you do have a large amount of time to study. If you have three to four months, the study plan is a really great way to uh, make sure you hit on all those points. But again, if as an instructor, you, you know, you want them to just go in and practice geometry questions or just a geometry lesson, then that's totally fine too. 
Okay, and if I'm a student who really loves geometry and I've done all the geometry lessons, will it let me repeat them or does it, does it kind of close those out and say you've already done these, they're no longer open to you? So they'll always be, in terms of lessons, they can always go back to any of the lessons that they want. Um, even if I've already read them, I can always go back here, click into them. Even from the study plan, I can go back and review the lessons from the study plan. So nothing is ever closed off from a student. We never kind of lock content from them and prevent them from studying it. So they can always go back to it. Um, okay, so it would be up to the instructors monitoring that to make sure students aren't, are really progressing through lessons and not just staying where they're comfortable. Correct. Thank you. Um, and on that note, for practice, um, we do allow resets. So if you wanted to go in um, and just, if a student had completed all of the math questions or reading questions, um, they would be able to go in and reset um, those category of questions as well and reattempt them. But I'll get to that section in, in a little bit. Um, so next below the lesson section, we have our flashcards. So this is where students can go to memorize those important concepts and terms. I know that the ACT doesn't test specifically on vocabulary, but they do have, I know, a list of, you know, vocab you should know going into the exam. Um, and this is a really simple click and flip interaction that I'm doing right now. You can filter these by vocab, math, science, by category, if you got it correct or incorrect. Um, you can see that confidence level feature coming back into play right here. So that students can be able to go back and filter just by their lowest um, confidence flashcards or medium or their high. And again, this is the, the view that I'm in right now is if I wanted to just come study flashcards on my own. If I was coming from the study plan section, it would be a very set number of flashcards that um, I would be studying. Next up, I will jump down into our practice question section. So this is a much more, I think, casual um, practice experience. It's not like a full length exam where you kind of are sitting down for the full length of time. You can come here anytime and practice um, different categories of questions. So I'll click into this pre-algebra question right now. You can practice the category. It's pretty straightforward interaction with the question itself. You can automatically have it the answer shows after you take it, or if I uncheck this button, I'll be able to just actually scroll right through the questions and review everything at the end. Student will get a session report, so they'll see how well they did on all the questions. You'll get some analytics in terms of how much time was taken on each question, the difficulty of each question, and then the ability to review the questions as well and scroll back through them. So next up is the test section. So this course does come with a lot of practice exams, um, 14 in total, and there are 14 full length practice ACT tests, um, which is really great, I think, for you know actually preparing for test day. And these are set up to really stimulate the real exam. Um, they do have the section breakdowns. If I click into take an exam, you can see that I'm going to be taking English, math, reading, and science, the different number of questions in each section, and then at the end, I'll get a score with my correctness. So this one is a little bit different. The questions itself and the experience is very similar to what you saw in the practice question section, but you do have timers up here timing how much time you have in the section. So I have 44 minutes to complete these 75 questions and an overall time of just three hours and 10 minutes for the entire exam. Let me answer a few questions here. And what will happen is once I get to the end of 75 questions, I'll be brought to what we call our review section where users can go in and actually see the questions 
um, and whether they've answered them or not, or we do have a flagging feature that they can flag if they easily want to come back and revisit those questions at the end before they decide to submit their questions. Come down here. Students won't submit their questions without actually physically saying that they're ready to do so. I'm going to submit these answers. And I will be brought into the next section immediately after this. Now I'm in the math section. I have a different timer for this section. The total time is automatically going to adjust and deduct the time from the first section. Um, and it's the same experience as the first until I'm ready to go back and review and finalize everything. You can submit the answers. It does have a break, so if students wanted to take a break, um, get out, move around, they have 15 minutes to do so, and this is exactly how the actual ACT exam is. If they're ready to go beforehand, we do allow them to end the break and continue with the exam. So I'm just going to finish these really quickly so we can get to the report. Uh, I have a quick question about the timing. Yes. So students that don't have standard time and they have extended time, is there an option to where they can take the, the practice test at the time that they would normally be allotted for the real ACT? Right now we don't have that. Um, it's actually a feature that we're working on is to be able to customize the time sections because we do realize um, there are a lot of students who do get extra time. Um, so right now we don't we don't have a way to do that. Um, okay. okay, that's perfect. That's all I wanted to know. Sure. Okay. All right. And after I submit my answers for the last section, I am going to be brought to a score overview page. Again, I'm going to get my overall score, how well I did on each section, percentage-wise. And I can e actually click into each section itself to go through the actual questions and also see a score breakdown at a category level just so I can see how well I did in each subcategory um, within each section. All right. Now I'm going to jump back. Do you have any questions on the four sections of course content? Excellent. All right. So I'm going to jump up here and talk about these two icons over here. So below the study plan, we have what's called our game center. The game center is an area where we allow students to come at their leisure. It's not part of the study plan. It's a little bit um, an outside feature. And what it does is it takes all of the flashcards and actually turns them into more interactive games that they can play. And you can see leaderboards as well. So just for an example, this one is a little bit different, um, or all the games are a little bit different. They each have a different objective and students score points, have different lives, um, and are basically asked to kind of perform different tasks based on the flashcards themselves. So this one is pretty basic. I didn't do anything on this one. Again, we'll go to a different game. We'll go to here. You'll see they're all a little bit different. Some are like matching. Others are going to be a little bit more of a challenging. Um, game, but this is something where students can come just by themselves outside of the study plan or outside of any other feature. And if you are concerned at all about kind of the features or student data, we can turn off this leaderboard information. If that's something you guys aren't interested in, I know there's some privacy issues within school districts, so if you didn't want any kind of student data to be shown to anyone in the public, we can turn that off. Um, I, I don't think there'd be a problem with that. Okay, perfect. And we can leave it off. 
All right, below that is our discussion section. Um, and this is where we allow people to actually interact with others in the platform. It's turned on right now for you guys, and we kind of break it up into the same or two different areas. We have public discussions and we also have private discussions. Public discussions can be generic discussions that students post just right here in public discussions. They also do populate on every piece of content, so you can see this. On any piece of content, you'll see different discussions um, occurring between students. We have seen in the past with work with high schools, um, sometimes the discussion boards get abused by high school students um, and are used slightly inappropriately. So this is something that we kind of just monitor on a school by school basis. And it is something that we can also turn off in case students aren't posting about anything relevant to the course itself. I think that might be a feature that we would start um, with turned off and then as we progress into the year and students take more ownership, we would might we might consider turning back on. Okay, no problem. Definitely doable. Um, the second aspect is actually the private discussion feature. And this is something actually that might be useful to the instructors. So we can create private groups and private group can only be created if you have the name or the email of the student itself and actually invite them into the private group and this is our, this is used by more of our instructors to invite students into groups so that either at a classroom level or at a one-on-one -on -one student level the teachers can communicate with the students directly through the application itself and i can keep this on so that only teachers are able to create private discussions and not students in case students are creating discussions and getting off track you know whatnot um, yeah I think you that, know yep i think that's appropriate for it to be a teacher only feature right now perfect all right i can i'll make that change after after our call um, but it is a nice way for teachers and students to be able to communicate it's kind of a discussion forum you can attach different um, files, refer to different content. So it is, it's pretty nice. Lastly, I'm gonna jump up to our home dashboard. Um, this is where a lot of student data and analytics are actually stored for the students so that they can help them understand their progress and their performance. Obviously up here at the top, you're gonna see that math had very similar um, that you saw in the study plan, if not the exact same to help keep them on track for their um, target end date. Below here, this is actually where we do some score prediction based on actual ACT scores. So they can get a breakdown based on their performance in practice questions and exams, where they would fall on the scaled 36 score. Below that is our strengths and weaknesses section. So this matches up to the topics in the practice questions and test sections and as students continue to answer questions they will start seeing data populate here um, in terms of their kind of where they fall on the strengths and weaknesses scale for the practice questions and let me see if I refresh we should be able to see some of the data on here yes um, so this is from the practice questions I performed from the practice question section and also in the exam. Um, I obviously didn't perform very well, so a lot of my skill level is at the beginner side. Um, but it is nice to be able to see how you progress over time and how these, these do change based on students' performance on the question. All right. Any questions on the student side? If not, then I'm going to jump over to the teacher reporting tool that we provide you guys and walk you through a little bit more of that. So we call it the Boost Dashboard and all of the teachers 
their accounts will have access to this. What it does, it enables them to see some more high level information on students and also groups. Right now, let me jump down to the group reports. Um, all of the students are in one group, the 11th grade group. Leanna, you do have the power actually to create more groups if you wanted, and we could give other people access as well through an, a separate tool um, so that you could actually compare it, whether it be schools, if you wanted to different classrooms, that you could have a more robust comparison across groups. Right now, everyone is in one group, but multiple students could be in multiple groups as well as multiple teachers to be in multiple groups. There's no restrictions on that. Okay. I, Sorry, go ahead. Nope. I was just gonna, if I click into the group report, I'm going to be given kind of what we call our group report card. And this has data, and this is all at the aggregate group level, um, which will be, it'll show the average progress through the course itself, their average practice scores, average exam scores, how many students are in the group, and then also the total time spent in the course itself. Below that, you'll be able to see the strengths and weaknesses at a group level. It's very similar to what the student sees, but this would be across all the students within a group. Um, and below that is the detail section, which I think is the most um, informative. So what we do is we take a lot of analytics around the content and actually are able to report that back to the teacher. So right away, um, student side of things, you can easily filter top five, bottom five performers. Obviously there's no data quite yet for you guys, so you're not gonna see anything. But if I click over into the lessons, practice and exams and flashcard section, Gonna, the lesson section is actually going to populate the lessons that the students are marking as low confidence the most. So if 100% of students have marked a lesson as low confidence, it's going to show up in this section. So just gives you a little bit of insight into how well they're feeling about a certain concept. For practice, it's going to show you the questions that students are at answering incorrectly the most often. So if 0% of students are answering a question correctly, it's going to show up on this top five most mispracticed questions. And all of these questions can be filtered by all of these topics in the categories and subcategories. Exams are similar. You can uh, filter based on the exam itself and figure out what the top five questions in an exam were that students were having problems with. And flashcards takes the same similar low confidence approach and all the terms that students are marking low confidence, you'll be able to toggle down here. And as students start actually using the platform, all of this will actually start getting filled up. And so if I go back to the student listing, this is where I'm going to see all of the students listed out in the course itself. You can easily search their name, email, or ID. You can also filter these. You guys just have one course. If you did add more groups, you could add additional groups and filter those students based down by there. You'll see some high level information similar to the group in terms of the last date that they logged in, their progress throughout the course, their average practice score, their score, and then how long on average they're spending in the application when they're actually logged in. You can also change the date range. This is all totally customizable. So if you just wanted to see how they've done in the past week versus the past two months, you can customize that date range and also export all this data if you wanted to have it in a spreadsheet. If I click into an individual student, I'm gonna get a very similar report as I did for the group report. High level information for the student their personal strengths and weaknesses. So this is going to be exactly what they see when they actually log in. And then some details in terms of how many confidence levels they've marked so far, what they've been marking them as um, for lessons and flashcards. Practice, you're going to see their score report just like they see in the web application, same as the exam. So you'll see which exams they've completed and how well they've done on each exam. So any questions on the reporting side of things?
Nope. All right. Um, so those are the main tools. If you wanted, I could go into the, the tool that deals with the group creation, Liana. I don't know if you guys would want additional groups outside of just 11th grade, if you would want to be breaking it down into smaller cohorts or classes. Yes, we are going to. Can you show us how to create classes, please? Absolutely. Thank you. So that's in the teacher admin section. Um, so this just gives you a little bit more of an overview in terms of kind of what you're signed up for, how long you have access to right now, the number of licenses you guys have, and the classroom. So right now there's just the 11th grade classroom and then the one goal students. Um, and there's these 49 students, I believe, are all part of the 347 students. If you wanted to create a classroom, all you have to do is go here, you select create new classroom. Hit next. Right away, I'm going to see a listing of all of the available instructors. Right now, it's just those two one goal instructors in Atlanta, and I will upload the additional instructors right after this meeting. Click assign. I'm going to click next. All of these students are loading right now. So you'll be able to actually pick the students and assign them into um, their courses or into different classrooms. You can usually search student names. And this is how you build the classrooms themselves. So as soon as you're ready to go, hit finish. Technically, I'm over the license limit but I'll finish that or I'll fix that after this call so basically as soon as I would hit this finish group it's going to create the group and add all of the students into the group and you can see all of the instructors listed out here all of the students listed out here if you wanted to add a new student you could easily do that here upload multiple or if you wanted to generate more bench group accounts that's where you would do it but I believe I have the full list of all of the students. So you guys should be good to go for, for the students. But Emily, as we get um, new students after the start of the year, we can just, any teacher can just go in and add that new student with this feature? Yes. And so this, um, I mean, if everyone, if all the teachers want access to this tool, they can. Um, typically, I usually only like a few teachers, one or two teachers from each school has access to this, but that's totally um, up to you. Okay, so I could send you a list of like one name per campus to have the ability to add students. Yep. All right. And so that's um, pretty much the gist of everything. I went by really quickly since I was a little concerned on time, but. Um, we were able to cover pretty much everything. Um, I don't know if you guys have any questions. We still do have some time. Um, you've answered all the questions that I had. Does anyone else have any questions? Okay, so since the feature of the extended time for those students who need it is not built in yet, the test will always time out on them, correct? Yes, but they can always go back and retake the exam. Okay, so will it delete the answers and they just have to start over? Yes. So that each, okay. So do you know exactly like when? that extended time will be added to that? Hopefully in the next few months. Um, it, on a tech side and kind of how to manage that, we're still trying to figure out the best interaction, but it is a feature that should be coming, I would say, in the next three to four months, hopefully. Okay. Is there a way to pause the test then? Yes. Is you okay. can definitely pause the test at any time, and I can go back and show you that really quickly. So if I go in and start an exam, 
There is a pause button up here in the upper right hand corner. So at any time during the exam, um, they can pause the test. And you'll see it listed in the test listing as a paused exam instead of a completed exam. And if I click back into it, it'll let me start off exactly where I stopped. Any other questions? It sounds like that is all. Thank you so much, Emily. I really appreciate you taking your time to do this for us today. Oh, absolutely. It's my pleasure. And um, Leanna, I'll let you know once all of the other teachers have been imported. And if you just want to let me know who you want to give the ability to kind of manage those groups and the students, just let me know and, and I'll set that up as well. All right. I'm working on that email right now. Okay. Perfect. All right. All right thank you. Thank you, guys. Have a good rest of your Tuesday.